um, we will be having uh, the Alzheimer's Association is going to hold a presentation in October on um, early onset of dementia. And if that goes well, she said that we would talk about possibly having um, a, a group here, because we did have a group for um, dementia, which started out wonderful, but people just were not signing up for it. So um, we're going to try another avenue for that. along the way, so um, as soon as they um, have somebody, they'll contact us, because that's a really popular program. No questions? No questions for the gentleman. Thank you. Well, thank you. That's a good report, as always. It's a new fiscal year for uh, the city and thus our department. So what I'd ask out to you is um, the end of FY14 budget. So um, we're in the process of transferring funds into the, uh, personal, the uh, per per personnel. So there's 82655 that we owe. Um, our budget so that gets transferred from some of our revolving accounts into uh, personal services for the city so we you know will eventually be zero in that and then we had um, also to transfer some funds to cover our OM we had three hundred and seventy three dollars and seventy eight cents over um, so money monies were transferred from the revolving account to cover that so um, we are now working in our new fiscal year, um, and this will all get closed out. But at the end of um, the fiscal year, we're usually transferring funds from our various revolving accounts, um, which includes grants to uh, cover the costs of what we owe um, in our budget um, for uh, salaries. Yeah. And that's something that we do every year. So the city does appropriate uh, money, and then we um, have within our budget. Everybody should have gotten um, the budget for FY15 a couple of months ago, probably in um, May, once it was approved through the mayor's office, and then you know, it was approved by the city council as well. So there were any changes with that. So are you saying that it's balanced by after like? If, when you look at the numbers, it looks like it's in a negative balance. It is. It gets right. balanced after the, the transfer transfer of funds. Yeah. Just that we don't see it now. We'll see yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. When when um, the monies are transferred for both OM and PF, then you know it's a, we're zero zero. Mm -hmm. We don't owe the city any more money in our budget. Mm -hmm. It'll be done. Balance. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, it, it with the, um, the budgets. I will just add that um, both families of uh, Joan Finn and um, Mary Smith, the uh, contributions um, in memory of were made to the uh, Northampton Senior Center. Um, for Mary, that was true. And then for Joan, it was both here and um, the uh, St. Elizabeth Ann Seaton Church. And I'll, I'll give a report later that um, we are getting funds. So we typically 
send thank yous to those who donate and then families are provided the names and addresses of those who have made donations and then the family can also send out a thank you. And, and I'll just add that um, flowers were sent both to Mary Smith and to um, Joan Finn. And so I'm going to pass this around and you know, people can do it at their own convenience if you want to make a contribution. Um, the flowers were sent both from the board and for staff members who also contributed. Um, and what, what I'll say is we have that sunshine fund, so if there's more money collected than what we need, then it goes into that and it's used for um, whatever needs to be done with the board. And these are all private donations made by the board. Um, it has nothing at all to do with city revenue um, or appropriations. So it's all coming from the generosity of the board or the staff. And, and I'm, I'm passing this around. It's not going to make anyone feel like you've got to do it right now, whatever. So it, it'll be here till the end of the meeting. So thank you all very much um, for whatever you contributed. It's just, you know, a hard thing to do for members leaving. collaborate with them um, because it is here and it is a program that's very uh, worthwhile and a lot of fun um, so it was unfortunate that that did not happen this year so um, I'll be meeting with Roy to figure out how can group sing continue um, based on what the cost is to um, have that group sing so that that will be happening and, and I do hope that it can continue well ha have you gone to the last group sing um, we were told that and um, some of us got together and some of the thoughts were to possibly have a tag sale with the profits coming back for group saying and also maybe a raffle or something yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah so i'm sure hi 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 we have to get a real good prize donated you know and then sell raffle tickets for a while okay well that's been Plus. so i'm sure roy will mention that but it's good if, you know, there's some connection with the uh, people who come to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we want to welcome Diana. Hi. 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 So you're all set with the agenda and yes. carry on from this point. Okay. We just got it. Um, we're going to go on to the director's report, Patty. I'm just going to mention that this is being um, televised. It's being taped, so it'll eventually be on um, TV. Okay. You the right but place you should still be here. <laughs> 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 They covered in spot. So, uh, it, as I said, um, I'll be meeting with Roy and Audrey uh, to see what is going to come. Thank you, Lorraine, for those um, comments about it. Um, we are going to be receiving a senior aid through the Senior Service of America Incorporated. Also, the Senior Employment Program that runs the program comes out of the Department of Elder Affairs in Springfield. We've had um, aides in the past, but not for a long time. And that person, um, she will be starting on Monday, and you'll get to meet her in due time, I'm sure. And she'll be working uh, 20 hours a week. And it's at no cost to us. You know, we provide supervision and evaluation. Um, and we're looking forward to um, having a position again. So, um, and that she'll have a lot of different responsibilities, but you'll get to meet her whenever you're in the building, I'm sure. So that's wonderful. Um, we held the tax sale June 14th. Um, so we did um, have a nice
nice fundraiser. Um, and we were fortunate that <clears throat> there was a gentleman who donated items to us who does flea markets. And so we asked him uh, if he wanted to take whatever we had left at the end after we kind of sorted and chose to keep things for various mini sales and whatnot, uh, which he did. So we didn't have the material, the um, items in the building for very long. So mm -hmm. it's always good because it is sometimes difficult to find an organization to take what we have. Um, sometimes it's Big Brother, sometimes Salvation Army. Um, sometimes I know Crystal's husband dropped things off at um, uh, Goodwill. Goodwill. Good well. <laughs> then, you know, it's, uh, so it, was, it went smoother than usual, so it was mm -hmm. great. And we had a lot of wonderful donations um, which uh, were sold and some that we you know, keep for the senior center because it's how we can also have some new items here. Um, Heather K. Lane, the program coordinator, and then Bob Montague, and um, I met with Tours of Distinction, who do a variety of uh, trips, both um, uh, like within the United States and also out of the country, to find out if there's something that we can do to work with them to make the process of us doing um, trips easier and maybe not having to be concerned about having a travel coordinator. So the meeting I thought went very well and we hope to uh, be able to um, offer trips. But it, you know, again, I have to talk with the procurement officer with the city because of the whole bid process and whatnot. So we're trying to figure out a way that we can do this because people are asking about trips. Um, so. Uh, we held Shred Day, our annual Shred Day, which we try to do twice a year. That was on June 21st, and $627 were made. Um, what did you do on the tag sale? Um, it was, I'm going to say like $1,200. Oh, Could have been a little more than that. Mm -hmm. So, um, both the tag sale and Shred Day have very limited uh, expenditures. So, most times it's pretty clear profit which is what we wanted since it's a fundraiser. Um, so we'll have another one in the fall because we usually do one in the spring and one in the fall. So. And, um, Are you going to do, there was something one time that said something about a silent auction in the fall. Is that still um, on the table? Well, it's, 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 uh, it's on the burner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Slowly simmering. It's cooking. Um, <laughs> uh, so uh -huh. yes, it, it, that's been a thought for a while and we have gotten a few donations for that. Um, do I think it's going to happen this fall? Probably not, but it will happen. Yeah. It's a bigger planning event than yeah. okay. yeah. a tag sale or even a craft beer. Mm -hmm. so, but it can be you know, a pretty nice event um, when you tie it in with something else. Um, one of the things that I've been working a lot on is the um, Senior Tax Workoff Program. Uh, which is, the, you know, the, again, the mayor had um, announced that in his inauguration speech. Uh, and um, so it's underway, and in June it was announced um, people were applying, and currently people have been interviewed. I interviewed pe people, so participants who are interested submit their application. Then there's a financial sheet as well. The assessor, Joan Serafin, reviews the um, financials and it's either approved or not based on <clears throat> did they meet the qualifications to be uh, part of the program. Um, and then there's the application where they, that a participant fills in what their skills are, what they might be interested in doing. Then once I get that and the approval from the assessor, I interview the applicants and right now we have 12 who are going to be or are placed already um, Forbes library the senior center we have three at the senior center two who will be working as receptionists and one as a greeter gift shop um, where else are they um, one in central services We'll have several in the school department, um, one in the Board of Health, and one at the Recreation Department. So 
Um, and I just got some additional job placements from Forbes Library and the school department. So they'll be in a lot of positions um, ready. So that I think is really good. Um, people are very appreciative of this program um, because it will help them uh, with their um, taxes. So they, as a participant, work up to 125 hours between July 1st and November 30th, and what they accrue within those 125 hours, or could be the 125 hours, it's applied as a credit to their taxes for next year. Then in October of this year, we'll start another series, which will go from January 1st until November 30th. So people will reapply. And you know, if we have more than 20 applicants, then it would be a lottery system. Um, right now, we didn't have, uh, by the deadline, didn't have more than 20 applies, so we didn't have to do a lottery system. So it, it's, um, I think, a well-received program, and it's a good thing that for the city and able to help departments, but it helps participants who, you know, we all talk about people aging in place and being able to stay in the homes and work in them. So it's um, very beneficial all around. Um, so, yeah, I'm sure this program will catch on with other departments and uh, because it is a benefit for, um, I mean, I'm going to speak for the senior center that we have additional people helping us uh, do what we need to have done here. So, so that's what I have for my report. Any questions? No? No questions on the report? Okay, thank you. We'll move on to the building and grounds report. Building and grounds. Well, we all know it's been hot and humid. We had a little bit of um, issue with our AC, but it's um, under control. Um, you know, it's a very sophisticated system, and Central Services really takes hold of getting it to work properly, and so um, it is. Uh, it's working. <laughs> the other thing is that um, we've had. Um, theft of some of our plants around the building. Yeah. We all know we have a, a volunteer who does a lot of the plantings around um, who reported to Crystal that maybe four or five plants have been taken mm -hmm. and, that guy. and out of the ground. Right, yeah, right out mm -hmm. of the ground. Yeah. Uh, roots and all. Yeah. <laughs> he said that they don't even have a chance to really get rooted. It's usually within, like if you plant something on a Thursday or Friday by the following Monday, they'll be gone. Yes. Yeah. And then um, when we had the dedication for the uh, meditation garden, um, there were three plants that had been removed from there as well. Oh, so, yeah. Um, yeah. so um, yeah, we're, kind of, we're keeping an eye on it. And if we have any leads, we'll see what we can do. But um, I am going to call the police department just to notify them that, you know, that yeah. stuff is yeah. being removed. So. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> so, that's, that's obviously, they go off in the grounds. Yeah, we, I mean, we, not that we like check every nook and cranny in the, um, yeah. in the, uh, on the property, but um, we believe that it's being taken and planted somewhere else, mm -hmm. close by. Somebody's garden. So. Uh, yeah, it's kind of disheartening because people work so hard both on that garden yeah. and, yeah. and they um, cost money. And the, 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 the plants cost money, money too. Yeah. Yeah. Like they can't be free. It's so, it's so, so we're keeping an eye on that. But that's the most that's happened out there. Um, you know, we still have some mulch out there that will get spread around. So hopefully we can have our parking space back. Mm -hmm. So that's that's it for the building. Sorry, we lose that space in the winter. Yeah, yeah I know with the snow. Yeah, oh, gosh. That'll be here before you know it. Oh. Mm -hmm. That's it for building your grounds. Any questions? And then we'll move on to old business and just mediation garden and yeah. the work project. So the um, Garden was dedicated on June 21st. I know uh, many of you were there, um, and 
uh, Frank Netto spoke on behalf of the Netto family. And it was, a, it was a nice turnout, and people then came inside and had some refreshments. The, the garden, I don't know if, it, if you have gone in there yet, but you should just go in and see what it's like. And um, I don't know how many people might have been out there sitting already, but you know, it's a quieter place. And, up here and have a little rest and stuff. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Do you have the benches? Like, <laughs> are they, are they secure? Yeah, yeah, the benches are secure because I told Frank um, and Kevin Netto that they needed to do that or the benches probably would not be there in the future. Um, and both those benches eventually will have a plaque on them. Um, and then sort of tying in with the brick project, if you look in the center, there's the bricks that um, <clears throat> with the brick project, people can um, purchase a brick. They can pay to have a brick with um, an inscription on it. And then we send that out to the company, it comes back inscribed. And then one of the bricks that has nothing on it is taken out, and the one that um, has been inscribed goes inside. So um, it, right now, it's that center circle uh, in the uh, garden that will have the inscription bricks. And then if we need more, then there's other areas in the garden that can be used. So, you know, I think the family did a wonderful job with that. And, uh, you know, they, they tended to do quite a bit with both the work project and the plantings and just putting the whole garden together. Okay, how much is it for brick to get a brick? To get a brick with the inscription, it's um, $100. It's being looked at as um, a fundraiser in a way to kind of maintain that, that garden. So if anybody's interested, we have forms at the front desk. Mm -hmm. and, and it can be for anybody. It doesn't have to be a senior who wants the brick. It doesn't have to be a board member. It can be anybody in the public who just wants to acknowledge um, a family member or you know some happy saying or whatever. But um, you get a good example up on the front desk too of okay, a brick that's been done. Yeah, the, the brick that's on display shows you one the size of the brick, the uh, lettering. Um, it's inscribed. It's indented lettering and then it's put there's black paint in it mm -hmm. so it's longer lasting and, um, and so when we get an order of maybe five we'll send it out and it takes no time at all for it to come back and then they'll get put in there pretty soon it'll be, be full but the applications are um, at the front desk so it looks the brick project is looked at as a way to support the um, the garden. And um, I guess if we looked at it, it's, it, you might call it a fundraiser, but it's really for the maintenance of the garden. It's a great idea. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I, I look at the garden and say it seems like it's always been there. You know, it just really added a lot to the um, yeah. back area. Anyone have anything in all business? So um, it's time to apply for a number of grants, and the three that I listed here, um, Highland Valley Elder Services, as you know, we um, apply for grants every single year. Some years are more successful than others. Um, last year we received, <clears throat> out of three requests, we received two grants, um, one for transportation and the other for our companion program. Um, this year we're looking at uh, several things. Again, transportation, we're looking at um, having um, a grant that would assist us to have um, documents, our calendars, whatever, printed in um, Spanish so that we can um, open that process up to um, those individuals who do not read or um, speak English. Um, so those are at least two. The, um, staff is looking at um, how and what other kinds of grants we can apply for. Those are fairly small grants, um, but one of the other things with Highland Valley Elder Service grants is that it's um, being looked at, and this is kind of true in many areas of government, is regionalization, where you're collaborating with other communities. So that's also something that's being looked at, to collaborate with other communities for um, 
could be sharing a nurse, could be uh, transportation, could be a number of things. Um, and Island Valley is uh, looking for what you might call as a pilot program. Uh, then the Department of Elder Affairs, every year we get to apply for the um, formula grant, that's the name of the grant, and that's based on the number of seniors you have in your community times the dollar amount that the legislature approves. Okay? This past fiscal year it was $8 a person, um, and that's the application um, is due in August for this grant. <clears throat> um, so that typically pays salaries here. We don't use it for anything else, it pays for salaries. So um, Emma Schmarzo from the Department of Elder Affairs was here um, back in May and did a workshop about the formula grant. Um, there's not a lot that has changed, um, but um, the dollar amount could uh, change. And how does the, um, the number of seniors get, is that from city census? The uh, federal census is where the uh, number of seniors comes from. Uh, so in 2010, when there was the federal census, our population for seniors went up, so we benefited yeah. quite a bit. Um, so that's how it's determined. Right now we have um, 5,874 seniors. Um, so times $8, that's what our formula grant was for last year. Another way that the set census helps you. you know, I think a lot of people don't even understand sometimes mm -hmm. the value, like the yes. places like the senior center, there's a census that counts seniors. So it's the federal census and, um, you know, in 2020 we'll be having another federal census. And my concern was, oh geez, you know, we've had so many health care facilities close and everything up in. So, you know, you lose a couple hundred, but now we have the assisted living open up on Haydenville Road at Linda Manor, mm -hmm. and then we're going to have one up on Hospital Hill another assisted living. So our population is um, going to increase, I believe, for seniors. But also, in talking to new seniors who come in here, you know, it's like they're moving to Northampton to be with family and just because it's the place to be. So, you know, I would only imagine our population for seniors would be going up. I have another question since you raised uh, assisted living. Is there, oh, does the federal government have much money that goes to um, assisted living, or is that all privately funded? There's different ways. Is it mostly private? Yeah. It's mostly yeah. privately owned, or there are some that are non-profit. Non-profit, yeah. Mm -hmm. Or even not-for-profit. Not mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's um, like subsidies that you can get in order to have for an individual who doesn't have enough money to move to an assisted living. Yeah. There's um, like a, it's called group adult foster care. Um, which is usually, or there's the, the, the scholar program here. Congregate. Yeah. 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 The group adult foster care program, if your income is below $1,141 a month, um, you can move into an assisted living and they subsidize the rent. Um, or if you joined um, a SCO program, like if you're dual eligible, you have both Medicare and Medicaid. Mm -hmm. um, through the SCO programs, the SCOs have a lot of contracts with assisted livings. Um, usually you share a bedroom, you share a room, um, so an apartment, so two people would live in one apartment, um, oh, but it's for lower income so individuals yeah. mm -hmm. to be able to live in assisted living. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if um, Linda Manor uh, assisted living, if they've had an open house yet. Mm -hmm. I know that they they yeah, had a phone call. You can see it on television. Oh, yeah. Viral. Are they going to open up soon? I don't think so. Because I know they're It doesn't look like it. I think the target date was August. I was talking to somebody at the... That was still in the fall of the week. The target date was August. Maybe. Maybe. Of course, it just didn't look to me like it was... Far along than well, that's always the problem. <laughs> and of course, all those people who will, all those people who will be turning 60, um, will also be included in our population. Hey, John. Hey, John. <laughs> <laughs> it's just more kids. You're just a baby. Um, and then also the Department of Elder Affairs um, are having um, incentive grants, um, which 
um, and working with hopefully we're calling it the Hamptons meeting North Hampton, South Hampton, West Hampton, and East Hampton. Mm -hmm. and I didn't know which one I left off. Um, to uh, we've had we've had a, some of us have had a brief conversation about working together to collaborate again for that regionalization where when it <coughs> appears that you're working with others to um, assist seniors um, with with it, within the um, boundaries of your uh, city or town as well as outside of your city or town so that's what we're working on so there's a lot of grants and then there's other grants too that every so often we hear about um, that we will be looking for but uh, you know it's all part of how our budget stays funded is through the grants and in many cases you hope the grant continues uh, which isn't always the case like as we saw with the uh, Highland Valley Elder Services low impact we lost that grant mm -hmm. they didn't fund that last year so um, you know right now low impact is running in the red so that's, that program will be reviewed mm -hmm. the other thing i should just mention it's not really based on grants but um you know we're going to sit down um, to evaluate the wednesday evening being opened mm -hmm. looking at how many people are in the building and what kind of programs and services are really being offered versus weighing that with paying the building monitor having a staff person here um, and having the building open so that you'll hear more about that as we make a decision about what to do um, you know that the whole idea about wednesdays came from uh, a number of people wanting the building to be open because they work or they you know, can't come in during the day so um, it was to open it up to see what we could do at least one evening a week and so far with what we're doing it hasn't prompted me to think oh gee we should be open two or three evenings a week so mm -hmm. we'll, we'll look at that very closely to make sure that our our staffing and finances are well used uh, mm -hmm. on a wednesday or not on a wednesday mm -hmm. yeah i feel like the highest number of people that were interested in having the fitness center be open in the evenings were the fitness center participants and we only have like two maybe three on a regular basis that use it on the mm -hmm. evening. So I think maybe they just kept coming up to the desk, those two are <laughs> 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 like, where are all these people that were coming to the desk asking about that? <laughs> <laughs> it did, it seems like we yeah. out until now that people signed in they yeah. 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 advantage of yeah, it's a great system. It is. It's really good having it. Now we just really, we, we still have people who just walk in and they don't scan in. So um, one of the people that we have as a participant through the tax workout program will be a greeter and work within the um, gift shop and doing you know things out there in the lobby. Um, so that person is going to be able to monitor just to see how many people we miss mm -hmm. um, coming in. Because I can stand at the reception desk and just be looking out, and yeah. you know, it could be three people who here they come, yeah. and yeah. so we're missing them for whatever reason. They're in the building, we're missing them. Yeah. Well, if you're on the phone or you're working yeah. with a customer, you aren't, you know, looking at those people. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 Would relocating the scanner at all help? Closer to the reception desk. Well, one of us is right there, but just one of us. Yeah, sort of putting a gate there, which you have to go through. Yeah, yeah. 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 that would be if you had to scan your card to get like a bar to open. Yeah. Yeah. That was a good idea. Yeah. Like to get into the That's very welcome. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that really makes you feel good. You know? Yeah. yeah. But I think more people scan in than don't. Oh, well, but, you know, it's, it's like you don't want to miss one single person because yeah. those are all for yeah. your totals. Mm -hmm. Like this morning, the um, brown bag, mm -hmm. you know, we give them numbers, we keep them in order. And I ask just about every single one of them. If I don't really see them do it, I ask them. And nine times out of ten, they have. They've learned that yeah. I'm the police. Yeah. Well, that's what they, I feel bad because that's what they feel like when you ask them. They kind of respond like you're the police, and it's like, I try to go into this. Well, it's our grant funding depends yeah, on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we do the same thing with the Wednesday morning. 
and breakfast table. Yeah. It comes yeah. in and say, well, you, if, they, if they're new, you just scan them first. Right, yeah. Well, I scanned in, you scan them for free breakfast. Mm -hmm. Oh, is there a free breakfast on mm here? -hmm. They run back out and yeah, press yeah. free breakfast. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, it keeps the numbers up. Yeah. And, and I noticed when you explain to them, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 when you explain to them why you want them to scan in and how helpful it is. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're very lucky. They are very <laughs> compliant when yeah. they yeah. when they yeah. take yeah. them. People yeah. respond to reasons, not just rules. Because we have right. to do it. Right. Absolutely. Right. But it's you know I don't think I probably should not say this, but we haven't had any major problems with people you know arguing about scanning or anything. So I mean that happens every so often. And the ones that don't like to do it, they like will scan and then just keep walking. Like they won't select what they're here for or what they're doing. Mm -hmm. But I still get that when I do the statistical reports, I, it'll show me that you had you know 5,000 participants, but you had 5,280 scans into your system. Mm -hmm. So there was like for a duplicated number, it, or it's what will show me that everybody who scanned their card and just kept walking won't tell me who they are, <laughs> which I would still so would be helpful. <laughs> A couple of times, I've seen that happen. If I know who it is and I know where they're going, I'll go home. Finish it. That way, you, you still get it. Yeah. Yeah. Are you sending that data to the NSA? Or, you know, yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. Yeah. Is that it? As far as I know, it's not being sent there, although they may have There is nothing. Okay, Most of us do that the NSA would <laughs> care about. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure. That's why people don't scan in. Yeah. They'd be bored to death. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, they have a phone in the pocket. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay, you'll see on the announcements you have August off, so enjoy yeah. the day. <laughs> And the next meeting will be in September. Right here, I hope she's going to turn. I didn't know. The second one. Okay.